Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Campus 31 Television. I'm Rich Peterson, your No Quarter Sports Reporter. We have an incredible game to go over. This past weekend, the East Carolina Pirates took on the Tulsa Golden Hurricanes in a highly anticipated matchup. The Pirates had gone through a lot of changes this past offseason, following their second consecutive Conference USA Championship. A new head coach, a new staff, many inexperienced players, and not to mention the new stadium addition, which adds over 7,000 more seats, are all headlining stories. Coach Ruffin McNeil stated in last Monday's press conference, right now, I'm getting a little goosebumps. You can't fake that. And he's completely right, because before this game, and until that final play was ruled as a catch, all 50,000 people present were feeling the same exact way. This game was huge for Pirate Nation. The atmosphere in Dowdy Ficklin was intense and overpowering. The crowd was the loudest I've ever heard it before, and it was beyond doubt only fit for a Pirate. In a game where the lead changed 12 times, ECU came out on top in an outrageously competitive shootout. Tulsa entered this game with nine returning offensive starters and four on defense. Two of these players who had major roles in Sunday's game were starting quarterback G.J. Ken and wide receiver Damaris Johnson. ECU, on the other hand, lost many of their starters after last season. Coach Ruff stated that players being out there without having many reps was a challenge, but those inexperienced players proved themselves worthy Sunday. The freshman wide receiver, Justin Jones, definitely did that on the final play of the game. Quarterback Dominique Davis, who is one of the players with a good amount of experience, was finally named starter just a little before the game, and he proved to be the right choice. The first half of the game wasn't nearly as thrilling as the second half. ECU elected to receive after winning the coin toss at the start of the game. The Pirates ended up punting after a few plays, but got the ball back almost instantly when Tulsa fumbled. And as you see there, the crowd cannot stay calm, as they were the entire game. Following the turnover, ECU's Jonathan Williams broke free for a 37-yard touchdown run that put the Pirates on top 7-0. to zero. Tulsa began moving down the field, having a pass almost intercepted at one point. After switching possession a few more times, Tulsa finally put some points on the board with a rushing touchdown. ECU returned the kickoff after the touchdown, and after a short-lived drive, they settled for a field goal, making it 10-7. Tulsa had a few good plays leading up to the 31-yard rushing touchdown by Demaris Johnson. After failing on the two-point conversion attempt, Tulsa kicked off to ECU once again, and the Pirates were able to march down the field one more time before the half. This time, a beautiful 30-yard pass from Dominique Davis to Lance Lewis. Tulsa started the drive afterwards with a few good pass completions but came up short with a potential touchdown pass that was well defended by ECU's secondary. Tulsa ended up settling for a field goal and the teams entered their locker rooms with a score, ECU up 17 to 16. The second half was when it started to really get wild. Tulsa's quarterback, Ken, began feeling a lot more pressure but was able to keep completing passes. He completed a 12-yard touchdown pass to Clay Sears, putting the Golden Hurricanes up 23 to 17. Dwayne Harris for ECU really showed up to play Sunday, as did much of their offense. He had a real nice kickoff return, juking defenders and setting, the, setting up the offense nicely. This led to an amazing 43-yard touchdown play where Lance Lewis showed true athleticism. As you see there, he was still able to stay in bounds. Afterwards, Ken did not take long to bring back the momentum to Tulsa's side when he found Jameel Owens wide open in the end zone, putting Tulsa back on top. ECU had some trouble with incomplete passes on their next drive. Several players dropped some very catchable passes. The fourth quarter began during this drive, and as you can see there, the fans were still excited as they ever been before. The traditional no-quarter flag was raised at the start of this unbelievable quarter. Fans jumped to their feet as Davis rushed in the end zone, making the score 31-29. ECU then kicked off to Tulsa and barely let the returner get past the 20-yard line with a very nice special teams play. The momentum could not stay on one side the entire game. Kin threw a 75-yard touchdown pass to Willie Carter, putting them up 35-31. to A few minutes later, Dwayne Harris showed why he is one of the star players on this team with this amazing run following the completion by Davis. Six yards from the end zone, the offense took the lead back with the completed pass to Harris, who seemed to be the star of that drive. And again, Tulsa refused to be silenced. After receiving the kickoff, a deflected pass was caught in the end zone by Trey Johnson, putting them up 42-38. to Dwayne Harris shines again after that drive with an absolutely incredible receiving touchdown where he showed 
truly how elusive he could be. At this point, the crowd was as unrelenting as each team's offense was. And yet again, Tulsa would not stop driving down the field. Ken was being pressured more and more, and yet they still managed to get in scoring distance. After a questionable call by the refs, Tulsa scored, putting them up 49-45. to With time running out on the clock, no timeouts left, and bad field position, you couldn't help but worry about how this season might begin. ECU began to turn towards desperation, which ultimately worked out in their favor. On a fourth down play, with five seconds remaining in the game, Dominique Davis threw an amazing 33-yard touchdown pass to the six-foot-eight Justin Jones, who caught it at just the right time. Time expired as he caught the pass in one of East Carolina's most epic wins was witnessed. The final score was 51 to 49 in this classic Conference USA matchup. Coach Ruff and all the other coaching staff did an absolutely outstanding job. Now a couple of things that need to be addressed. ECU's defense had a rough day covering Ken's passes. There were too many holes left available for Tulsa's players to run through. Even though our new blitz-minded defense pressured Ken quite a bit as you see here in these highlights, he was still able to pass for 399 yards. But luckily, the Pirates were able to walk away with a win. ECU's receivers had an outstanding day. Even though there were some passes that should have been caught, our receivers did great. Another thing is our new quarterback, Dominique Davis' performance was outstanding, and he was named Conference USA Offensive Player of the Week. He was a little over 60% with his passing completion, and he had five touchdown passes and only one interception. Davis also had great pocket presence. Our offensive linemen did an excellent job of providing protection, and Davis did a great job standing in the pocket, waiting to find an open receiver. When he was unable to see one, he would use his elusiveness and run the ball, and this worked. Another huge thing Sunday was the atmosphere. The Pirates had gone through a lot of changes before this game. ECU was proud to have Coach Ruff back, and Sunday, he looked like he belonged. Now let's take a look at the play of the game. Big Ben, as it is known by the players, is simply a Hail Mary. It is one of the most remarkable plays and finishes in ECU history. How amazing was that? A six foot eight receiver catching the ball over defenders, crashing to the ground surrounded in a pile of players, and being able to retain possession. It was heroic, and the celebration afterwards was enormous. The players rushed the end zone from the bench and overwhelmed Jones. The refs threw flags for unsportsmanlike conduct, but it didn't matter. The Pirates won the game as time expired and Coach Ruff looked right at home once again.